No, we're, we're, we do appreciate you being here tonight. We good? We're good. All right, go ahead, Brother Dean. Amen. Uh, well, we're excited to be here and um, here in just a short while. Uh, hey, we're glad to see you, Brother Seth. All right. And uh, that's all right. Uh, we do have another two that were not here to uh, be able to make it tonight. Adea and Jordan were two other teenagers that were on the trip with us. 
but they're not, they're not here tonight. So what we got planned for you is each one of them has been asked um, uh, to present a one to two minute. Um, basically, they're gonna introduce their name, they're gonna introduce their favorite thing about the whole trip and what they took most out of the whole trip. And we're gonna start with the ladies first. And so we're gonna start with Dylan, if you don't mind, just come on up and uh, you, can, you can start us off, all right? Come on up. I'm Zylan, and my, <laughs> my favorite part of the trip was the speech, and the most part that I took out of it was the word eternity. All right, you, you can come on up next. All right, we, the more we do this, guys, it'll be a lot quicker, all right? <laughs> my name is Alia. What the? F <laughs> my name is Alia. My favorite thing. <laughs> so my favorite thing. My name is my favorite thing was the singing and um, eternity. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let me let me remind your name. No, apparently, nobody decided to listen. So your name, what you took most out of it, and your favorite part of the trip. All right. Come on up. I've done this for two years, and I still don't ever know what to say. Um, but I'm Taylor. Um, I think the biggest thing that was most enjoyable was just experiencing something new. Like, since we have gone to the last place the last two years, just being able to see how different things go. Um, I think my favorite part was just, like, spending the week with everybody and just getting to know, like, everybody new in the youth group. Um, and then I just also want to take the time to thank Mallory and Cody and Philip, even though you got on my nerves, but that's okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Philip and Elisa for just taking the time to be able to do these things with us. Um, yeah, that's all I got. My name is Grace, and my, most, my, my favorite part of the entire trip was the skits. They were fun, very funny and <laughs> fun to watch. The thing I learned the most, or the thing I took from, took the most was like all the sermons, like how much, how many things they got into detail and how they taught me different things. My name is Elvira, and what I learned from my favorite part of the trip is me getting saved, and what I learned from the trip is getting humbled. Oh, well, humble yourself. My name is Charity, and my favorite thing about the trip was just getting to know everyone who I hadn't known before. And I really liked the service and the pastors. They were funny, but like they had a better message for like the Lord and stuff. And I really liked how he talked about humbling yourself. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 
Um, so, obviously, my favorite thing about the trip was getting saved, and I really did enjoy the messages because they really, because they really spoke. <laughs> They really spoke to me, and I, I, I realized that I needed to repent for my sins, and I actually got saved, and it was just an important experience for me. So. everyone my name's Southline um my favorite part about the trip was learning we were actually in Indiana after Cody told us we were going to Chicago but other than that it was still a fun experience I had fun at the carnival and getting to know everyone that I didn't know before as Charity said I loved all the services especially the humble yourself one that everyone keeps talking about and overall, it was just a great experience. Thank you to Cody, Mallory, Philip, and Elisa, and everyone else who came on the trip with us. My name's Audrey, and what I most enjoyed about the trip was the team games and the teamwork that when everyone participated. And what the thing I took most out of it was team, even though we did not win because of the basketball game, um, teamwork makes the dream work. Hi, my name is Winnie. And my favorite thing about the youth conference was making new friends and the skits. And one thing I learned is to humble yourself. My name is Seth. And one thing that I enjoyed was going to Kings Island and the skits and the whole humble yourself thing was kind of like a meme around there, but yeah. Hi, I'm Austin. And and one thing, my favorite, one of my favorite things was learning about God's word three days straight and uh, meeting other kids from different churches. And something I took the most out of was uh, something the pastor said in the first service, which was humble yourselves. And I'm going to try to do that my entire life, and I hope others will too. Hey, my name is Juan Vegas, and I liked it, the skits. Well, we appreciate that, and uh, we try to keep the teenagers a minimal. No offense, but we keep them to a minimal. If at this time, uh, we're going to actually have Elisa, if you don't mind, come up next, and you can spend a few minutes and just kind of discuss, uh, you know, what you took most out of it and how you were helping, all those different kinds of things. And Mallory, come after Elisa. Then Brother Philip, you come right after Mallory, and then I'll conclude the night. Elisa, and this was the first time that I was able to help chaperone the uh, the teen youth ministry here, and um, I would say it was a, a great opportunity to uh, see what happens behind the scenes, you know, of of just the the daily um, services here, and just see what's going on, and uh, just the wonderful impact that Cody and Mallory has on the youth program here. Um, very godly, and I uh, really appreciated being a part of that and getting to know all the kids here and all their unique and wonderful personalities. And um, I was just thankful that they 
um, accept me into their group and um, that we all had fun together. I wanted to say, I think the most um, impactful thing of the uh, conference was uh, the um, anointed speakers, so gifted and just godly and grounded in the word. Um, I really enjoyed uh, Charlie Clark, a very impactful minister, um, great messages that can impact all of us, the, the youth and the adults alike. So um, I would say the funnest or the, mo the thing that I took that was maybe the funnest or maybe the most um, memorable was uh, being there to witness um, Ashley and her rededication to the Lord. And um, that was a special moment. I was able to be there with her and Mallory during that time. So thank you. I'm glad that I was able to be a part of this trip. I feel like I come up here and say the same thing every year, but I just really love these teenagers. Um, this trip is always so great because I get to really watch these girls grow closer to the Lord during the week. And there is nothing more beautiful than a teenager drawing closer to the Lord at this age. Um, I know so many adults that just wish that they could go back to that time and serve the Lord for longer. And to watch these teenagers really pour their hearts out to the Lord, to watch teenagers fall on their face and worship before the Lord, and to watch them truly give their lives to Christ and be sold out for the Lord, it's just incredible. And I just love that the Lord has helped me be a part of that. Um, thank you so much for sending your teenagers and for entrusting us to help them grow in their spiritual lives. It's just incredible to watch every year. Thank you so much. Just uh, want to say that uh, me and Elisa are obviously, uh, we were pretty grateful for this opportunity, minister opportunity. I encourage any adult uh, at this church to try their best to make time to get involved with the teens or any opportunities in this ministry. Uh, that's one of the things I really like about this church is they have uh, the opportunities uh, and they can make room for you to grow and go at your speed, your comfort level, uh, no pressure. And uh, I, I just really love the fact that um, the integrity involved, um, the team of people that put this whole program together um, in Chicago, oh, I mean, Indiana, uh, that, that the whole team was just fantastic. The integrity, the maturity, uh, the training that, that we all went through there, the teens as well as the adults went through some uh, pretty intense training. You know, we were there like 10, 12 hours a day. Uh, but it, it, it's on the up and up and the integrity issue, like I said, is, is it's a more excellent way as far as uh, the way they pull things together there. Um, I'm really grateful for the teens for their participation and pouring out their heart and their time that they spent with us there uh, uh, for the salvation messages. And uh, the p one of the messages that I really loved amongst a bunch of them without having to go into a bunch of preaching myself here <laughs> is the, uh, the purity message. And, and the things that teens are facing today it, uh, the level of purity and the way that they taught purity uh, was, was on par uh, with scripture. And I think a lot of the teenagers there uh, really benefited from that teaching. And just to see the thousands of teens, literally thousands of teens come to the Lord there was, was I mean, you, you just have to, it's something that people should experience to see these teens um, the stuff that they have to go through. Uh, but I mean, it, I always tell Lisa this all the time. I'm glad I'm not a teenager nowadays and the culture that we live in. The, the stuff they have to face in school, the pressures, just all the twisted stuff that they're trying to put on these kids these days. And if we don't do our part as adults and as a body of believers in this family of, of the church, 
if we don't do our part to reach the kids, guess what? The world's going to do their part at reaching the kids through, through any kind of devices and the Internet and all this other stuff. So I ask everyone here to prayerfully consider we have this five-star thing coming up in a couple of weeks, which I'm hoping I get credit for for the past. Uh, but I, I don't know if I, that'll fly over too well. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so uh, just God bless you all. Thank you all for your prayers. Uh, thank you to uh, Cody and Mallory and the ministry opportunity. And uh, love you guys. Appreciate that. I know this isn't a normal church service on a Sunday night, but um, it's always exciting to see a, a report like that uh, when we come back. If you would take your Bibles to John chapter 17, before we actually get into the scriptures, I just want to kind of talk to you through my perspective. Um, this is our third year. Um, you know, you know, Mally and I actually have been, we've been, come October, be full-time ministry for me, but we've actually been doing the youth for over five and a half years now. Uh, it's been that long and um, this is our third year where we've had the opportunity to take them on a summer trip and it, every year it's, it's had its uh, blessings in, in some way or form and one of the things that I really enjoyed we the past two years we always went down to youth congress and this year we wanted to mix it up and try something new and one of the things I thought was interesting was it was a shorter conference it was a Tuesday night Wednesday and Thursday that was as the length of the conference and in two and a half days 11 sermons were preached. Think about that. 11 sermons were preached in two and a half days. And uh, I don't stand up here telling you they weren't 20-minute sermons either. Uh, they, were, they, were, they were full sermons. And, yeah, and, and one of the things that is interesting to take note of is that, you know, it's not often a lot of young people get an opportunity where there's no distractions, no influence, that the world can have on them, and they can just spend an entire week simply hearing message after message after message after message. And I think that's just an incredible opportunity for any individual. Um, we know we talk about the teenagers a lot, and that's what we're here for specifically tonight. But in all honesty, it's not just a teenager thing. It's a people thing. And we all need the Lord, not just teenagers. Adults, young adults, older adults, we all need the Lord. And to have two and a half days of 11 messages is truly incredible. One of the other things, too, is in a trip like this, you can take a lot of things that were said and say something about it. Uh, there's a lot of nuggets that were shared. There was a lot of thoughts that were, mess, uh, uh, that were spoken that, you know, you might jot down or I had jotted down. And uh, there's just a lot of different things you can take from a lot of people that you meet and to hear their experiences, and to hear their testimonies and whatnot, and there's just a lot that could be said. If you noticed this morning or tonight when you came in, the word eternity was written on the ground on every entrance of the door, and I did that last night because that was the whole theme of the conference was eternity. And I thought how neat would it be to write eternity uh, on the front entrance of our doors here at the church, and that's what I'm going to talk to you here in just a moment, but you know, we as believers in Christ have a message to share that in all honesty is a message like no other. I mean, the importance and the significance of the, the message that God has given to you and I is so much more important than literally anything that this world has to offer. The moment a believer begins to speak the word Jesus and what he did on the cross to another individual, there is no greater conversation that we can ever have in this world than a conversation like that. And this whole week we talked about eternity and all those different kinds of things. And just being able to go there and, and to witness these great things, obviously having two come to know Christ, Ashley and Elvira, was an incredible thing. One of the things about, I'm going to kind of put the spotlight on Elvira here in just a moment. She's only been coming to the youth for about a month now. Um, maybe a little longer, and it was actually on the Tuesday night service on arrival. Um, obviously, they're concluding the message. It was Brother Scott Pauley that was preaching, and he was concluding the message, and she did not need to be pushed. She did not need to be shoved. She didn't need to be led to the altar. She, who's only been in our youth group for about a little, about a month, willingly got up and accepted Christ as her Lord and Savior. That's called conviction, folks. Only God can do something like that in an individual's life. 
And I already mentioned this this uh, morning about Ashley's testimony, how a few years we, we baptized her. And she realized it was a false profession after talking to her. And um, I wasn't there to witness it. But one of the things that Mallory had mentioned to me in discussion, I'm going to put the spotlight on you for just a moment, Ashley, that the conviction was so unbearable, she literally fell flat on her face and trusted by faith that Jesus died on the cross for her sins. Amen. That's called conviction, folks. And I say all that to say this. To neglect an opportunity like that would be a shame not to prayer, pray for these folks as we pray for you. We ought to be praying for you. Be praying for me. Be praying for them. Because every decision we make here at this church can have an eternal impact. Every track we hand out, don't think for a moment that it can't have an internal impact. Because it can. It can. Um, there, I could stand up here and give you story after story. Pastor could come up here and give you story after story about how we did something or we said something and it led to a conversation or led to this and it had an eternal impact. Everything we do ought to have an eternal impact. Every word we say, every action we commit, every thought that we have, everything we do ought to have the sole purpose of impacting for eternity. And I think as Christians, and I always say this, and you guys know me, I stand up here and I say, I don't practice these things perfectly, but these are things we ought to practice. And, you know, we say this, and I, I really enjoyed uh, Pastor's message this morning, and it, it truly was convicting in my heart, because, you know, this is not a game. I understand something. And I, and I understand that none of us would sit here and say Christianity is a game. None of us would say that verbally, but our actions can sometimes say otherwise. And the, the life of a Christian is not a game. It's not just something we can just pick up and do and, and, and just, yeah, you may be able to come to church and play this game, but the Lord knows. The Lord knows. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things, the Bible says. God knows. God knows what's taking place in your heart as he does in my heart. God knows our thoughts are far off. He knows when we sit and he knows when we stand. Don't think for a minute, a minute that you or me playing this, if we were to play, I'm not saying anybody in here is playing this game. You're here on a Sunday night, and um, here, I'm here to tell you I'm thankful for Christians who come on a Sunday night service, by the way. And I appreciate Christians who make the effort to sacrifice to be here on a Sunday night. And, but you're not here playing this game, and I appreciate that. But there are many Christians out there playing a game. And this is, and I'm going to use this word because Jesus used the word. Uh, this, th we ought to be serious. This ought to be in, this, in the poor terminology. I mean, we got to get our act together. Th we got to get to business. I mean, Jesus says when, when, Mary and his, when, when Mary and Joseph had lost Jesus and they had searching for Jesus three days later, they found Jesus in the temple and he was teaching. And Jesus said to them, don't you know I'm about my father's business? What Jesus was doing is he was getting to work even at the age of 12. You know, you and I need to be getting to work. And yet again, I'm not saying anybody in here isn't working for the Lord. I'm just saying that we got a lot of folks who come on a Sunday morning who aren't here on a Sunday night. They don't come on Wednesday. They don't bring their Bibles to church. And can I tell you something else? We need to be bringing our Bibles to church. I mean, what, 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 why are we not bringing our Bibles to church? And, and can I tell you this? And I'm not going to rant. I do got a message. But we, we forget our Bibles at home. But you know what? We don't forget our cell phone. Yet again, I'm not trying to get on anybody. I'm not trying to beat up on anybody. But, but are we, are we going to be serious about the ministry or not? Are we going to be serious about the ministry? Take your Bibles to John chapter 17. And if you're able to, please stand in the honoring of God's word. And I know this is kind of a different service and, 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 and whatnot. But if you would, take your Bibles to John chapter 17. I'm going to read two verses for you. Starting in verse 2. Actually, I'm going to start in verse 1. The Bible says this. This was Jesus. Uh, he was praying to the Father in the Garden of Gethsemane. He says, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. By the way, this is the Lord's Prayer in John chapter 17. This is the Lord's Prayer. And he says in verse 2, As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Notice in verse 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Thank you. you. May be seated. Do you see the prayer that Jesus demonstrates here in John chapter 17? The prayer that Jesus was praying was not a prayer for need or want, but it was a prayer 
that God's will would be done. And the will of God was that all would come unto repentance and know eternal life. That was the prayer. Can I tell you something? That God's plan and God's will are two separate things. See, God's plan is everyone has a different plan. My plan was God called me in the ministry. He called me to one day pastor a church, wherever that may be. And that was God's plan for my life, and I'm still fulfilling my plan that God has set before me. God has a plan in your life. Not all of you are called to preach. Not all of you are called to teach a Sunday school class. But you have a plan, and God has a purpose in your life. But you see, the will of God, and, and, and when you, I guess when you could break down the will of God, it could be different to some area. But what we find is that God's will is that all would repent and come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That was God's design. That was God's will for everybody, for every individual. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That was the will of God. And we see Jesus Christ here. He's not asking, saying, hey, Lord, uh, would you give me this? Would you give me that? He's asking what God wants. His Father. He's, now, Jesus Christ, he, he, he's, he's praying to the Father, asking him, saying, what is it that you want? And he's literally asking G, or the Father, saying, Lord, I pray that everybody would have eternal life. Because that was God's will. That was God's will for everybody. If you would with me, we're going to do a little bit of a, uh, we're going to kind of take your Bibles to the book of Acts. Take your Bibles to the book of Acts in chapter 8. And we're going to do a little bit of a sword drill here in just a second. Uh, we're going to flip a couple things because I think it's important. Take your Bibles to the, keep your fingers here in John chapter 17. But in Acts chapter 8, I want you to notice a couple things. In Acts chapter 8, this was Philip. He was speaking the Ethiopian eunuch. Look at verse 36. And we're going to be flipping here in just a moment. In Acts chapter 8, verse 36, it says, and this was Philip, and uh, the Ethiop Ethiopian eunuch, it says, and as, and as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here's water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. What was Philip saying? He said, You need to believe by faith that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for your sins. Take your Bibles to Acts chapter 10. In Acts chapter 10, looking at verse 40, this was Peter. He was speaking to Corne uh, Cornelius. He was sent by God to J Agapa, and he went and met Cornelius. And you hear he's having this conversation with Cornelius in his home, and it says in verse 40, Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, talking about himself, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. Notice verse 43. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Take your Bibles to Acts chapter 16. In Acts chapter 16, you're familiar with this account as well, starting in verse 30. Acts chapter 16, verse 30, says this. And this was Silas and Paul, by the way. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Look at Acts chapter 17. This was Paul again at the church of Thessalonica, starting in verse, um, starting in verse 2. And Paul, as his manner was went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. And in verse 4, and some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of a chief woman, not a few. You can take it by the book of John. Do you notice the theme? The same message that we preach here at this church is the same message they preach in the, in the early church. That Jesus Christ, he died on the cross for the sins of the world. He was buried and he resurrected three days later. It's the same message that John preached. It's the same message that Peter preached. It's the same message that Paul preached. It's the same message that Barnabas preached. It's the same message that Silas preached. It's the same mes message that Aquila and Priscilla preached. It's the same message that, that all these men and women throughout the New Testament were sharing to these lost and dead people who do not know Christ. It's the same message that you and I preach here today. The message we share is an old message. It is an old message. There is nothing that we can do to merit eternal life. There is nothing we can do to purchase eternal life. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 7, the Bible says, Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give the substance of all his house for love, it would utterly be condemned. 
You can't buy love. You can't purchase it. You can't work for it. You can't do anything because Christ willingly gave a gift to you and I. Do you not realize the message of eternity is in the gospel? Because the gospel is the only thing that can give eternity. And how often do we take for granted the message that God has bestowed upon you and I and given us a responsibility to share? And how often do we not share it? Eternity. Eternity. We, have a, we live in a day, I'll be honest with you, it can be discouraging at times. It can be frightening at times. We see Christian homes who have put jobs, put schooling, education, put all these different things above church and above the things of God. And we wonder why our nation's in a mess. Did you know that the average Christian spends less than seven minutes a week praying in total? And, and we wonder why our nation's in, in such a mess as it is? Less than seven minutes an entire week? Now, I don't know whether those numbers are being true or not. And I'm not seeing anybody in here is doing those things. But here's what I am saying. If that is true, boy, how can we even call ourselves Christians? And yet again, I'm not saying anybody in here is doing those kinds of things. But what I am saying is this ministry that God has given us, you're here this, tonight as members of Hilltop Baptist Church. We need to be working for the Lord. And I appreciate what Pastor mentioned this morning. I really do, because this nonsense is, this, this, if, if we got stuff going on that, that shouldn't be in the church, folks, we need, to, we need to get over this. We need to stop worrying about all this other nonsense. We need to get out there and sharing the gospel message and start worrying about eternity than we are materialistic gain. Because I'm here to tell you the Bible makes it very clear in 1 Corinthians, wood, hay, and stubble, when those things are tried in the fire, those things are going to burn up. All of my possessions are going to burn up. All of your possessions are going to burn up. All your retirement funds are going to burn up. And can I tell you this? Can I tell you this? When you get to heaven, it's not even going to matter. When you get to heaven, it's not even going to matter. It's not. Is there anything wrong with doing those things? No. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with having a job. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with uh, being financially secure. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. But what I am saying is, do we put those things over God? Because sometimes we can. And if we're not careful, we'll do that in our own life. If I'm not careful, I'll do that in my own life. God's will was that all would come to repent, to know Jesus Christ and have eternal life. We have a, an important message to share. And we need to be sharing that message. Eternity is on the line, folks. Eternity is on the line. You know why? Listen, a lot of people disagree with me. And I don't care, because I'm going to say it. When it comes to my children, my personal children's salvation, I made it abundantly clear. When my kids talk about salvation, you come get me and mom. Because we're talking about eternity here. This is a serious, serious issue with me. And, I'm, and when it comes to my kids' eternity, I want to make sure it's dealt properly. Oh, listen, listen, you don't go, listen, we need to be serious about this. This isn't a game. We need to be serious about this. Our teenagers need to be serious about the ministry. And can I tell you something? Another thing I thought was interesting during this week. They're not bus kids. They're not. They're not bus kids. They're kids who want to serve the Lord. Amen. Why are we categorizing children? We shouldn't be doing those things. Can I tell you, I was, I'm guilty of that. Once I heard that, I thought, Lord, I'm not going to say that, that, those words no more. Forgive me. I'm just as guilty. We need to stop categorizing. We need to stop dividing. I'm not saying we're doing those things. Do not misunderstand. There are churches out there doing those things. We need to get serious about eternity. Because there's a message that you and I need to share, and we need to share it. There was a, um, I'm going to steal an example. It was that, uh, it was that um, Cheryl when she had that uh, thing for the bus workers, and Brother Joe Clawwitter came and preached a message, and he gave an example I thought was just, absolutely perfect. So I'm not, this is not my example, I'm stealing this example. Here we are in Fairfield. Hilltop Baptist Church sits in the city of Fairfield. Think of it like this. There was a young man one day who, um, he lived out on the coast and uh, a wave had washed up thousands upon thousands of starfish on the, on the coast by his, by his home. And the young man saw all these starfish, all thousands upon thousands of starfish laying here on the, on the, the sand. Obviously, they're going to die because they're not in the water. 
This young man runs out there and he begins to throw starfish after starfish into the sea. His neighbor begins to yell at him. He says, you're wasting your time. The young man begins to pick one starfish up, throws it into the sea, one after another. The old man yells out again. He says, you're wasting your time. The young boy picks up a starfish. He throws it in the sea and he says, I saved that one. Picks up another one, throws it in the sea, said, I saved that one. You and I can't save the world. Only God can do that. But you know what we can do? We can help one soul at a time. One soul at a time. And if we would just be a people that are just working for one soul at a time, the impact we could make. Jesus says, if you follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Let us follow Christ. Because the message that God has given you and I can have an eternal impact. Every track you pass out, every word you say to somebody at the grocery store, at the gas station, you never know what God can do. You never know what God can do. I remember, I'm going to end on this note. I remember I worked at my old job, and don't misunderstand, I'm not boasting about myself. Do not misunderstand. I remember I worked at my old job um, before I quit for full-time ministry. I was in line. They were catering one specific day uh, for all the workers, and they had a catering, and I was standing in line getting ready to get my food. And this specific caterer, they had cooked um, their meat and alcohol. And obviously, alcohol cooks out. We get all that. All right? And I'm standing in line trying to get ready to eat my food. And a gentleman behind me, he says to me, he says, hey, are you going to eat that? I knew immediately what he was getting at. I knew immediately that he was just trying to use it as a means to uh, fix or destroy my testimony as a Christian. So I said, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to go eat my lunch, and I'll be about, no big deal, right? It's, it's whatever. I'll just go in the fridge and grab my lunch, and I'll be about my business. Whole year passed by. A whole year passed by. I'm a nobody. Cody, Cody's a nobody. Here I am, just, I'm just working a normal, you know, daily job, right? First ship job, Monday through Friday, right? The CEO of the company, this was a year later, CEO of the company, multimillionaire guy, you know, from a secular standpoint, has everything. He comes to me, and I'm a nobody, and he says, hey, I just wanted to say I... I didn't know that you were a Christian until I had heard what happened a year ago. And I said, oh, I mean, it's no big deal. You know, I'm, you know, it's fine. And he said, I just wanted to apologize. I got to share Christ with that man. Amen. Now, he never received Christ. And I'm not boasting about myself. What I am saying is this. You never know the impact Amen. of every track you hand out, every decision you make, right. every thought you think, and every action you commit, the eternal impact. A seed, was, a seed was planted that day, not because of me, because of God. But we have an eternal message to share, and we need to be bold to share that message. And we need to be faithful to share that message. Jesus says very clearly, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Can I tell you tonight, as we get ready to have a song of invitation, that the message, yet again, we have to share is an eternal message. Don't walk out. Don't, don't live your life just living day by day. There's no joy in that. There's no service of the Lord in that. And we ought to serve the Lord with joy. The book of Psalm teaches that. We ought to serve the Lord with joy. Does that mean we're going to have a bad day here and there? Absolutely. Does that mean we can get discouraged from time to time? Absolutely. But do not let those things steal your joy. We ought to serve the Lord with joy. Can I tell you something? I love serving Hilltop Baptist Church. I mean that. I genuinely mean that. Because I know that there are folks here who are more serious about the business of Christ than there are a lot of churches out there. I'm glad to be part of this church because we are a part of a church. We are part of a church that actually desires to see folks come to know Christ. Because there are folks here that have an eternal message to share and have the boldness and willingness to share that. And I appreciate people in our very church who are willing to do that. I appreciate people who are serious about the work of the ministry. And I appreciate you, and I hope that we can be in unity of faith, and we can work together as brothers and sisters in Christ because we have an eternal message to share, and that we can willingly go out of this world, go out of these church doors. Remember, the mission field isn't in here. 
And the church is not for, for the lost people. It's for you and I. We need to go out there and share the message. We need to go out there and give the eternal message that God has bestowed upon you and I to a lost and dead world. Our Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to be here tonight, Lord. Lord, I understand it wasn't a normal, typical service, Lord, but I do believe that you got the glory tonight. I do believe that you were praised tonight. And I do believe that the message that you've given upon everyone in this church tonight is a message so important, Lord, that we need to be more faithful and more willing and more bold to proclaim your word to lost and dead world. God, I pray that you would not only strengthen us to give us the courage to share your message, Lord, but that you would work in our hearts and our lives. Lord, work in these teenagers' lives. Let not the, the, the decisions that were made this past week just end starting tomorrow, but let them be remembered in their heart and in their mind for the latter parts of their life. Lord, let this be a constant reminder to them that they are to humble themselves before the Lord, that we are all to humble ourselves before you, God. And God, that we would take the message that you've given us, life eternal, and share it to all those who need to hear it. God, we thank you for your grace, your mercy. We thank you for your word. And God, I pray that you would give us the strength to go out and share your word to a lost and dead world. In Jesus' name, amen. You may stand, take your hymns.